TV. Today on Stitches TV, we're doing a sewing tutorial for my brand new sewing pattern, the pontoon tear dress. Now it's called the pontoon tear dress oh, because I made this version on holiday out of a very expensive silk which was a bit too nice and I decided to jump off a pontoon into the sea to distress it. So today I'm going to show you how to make the pontoon tear dress. Instructions on where to get the pontoon tear dress sewing pattern will be in the description below. The version that we're doing today is the three tier version, but if you want to, if I just come in front here, I don't know if you can see, but you can just do the tier, two tier version, and then you get this sort of just below the knee length. So I just want to emphasize, so this sewing pattern doesn't have any actual written instructions because this is, I am the instruction. You get the whole of this video to make your pattern. But I have added lots of instructions on the actual sewing pattern. So I hope I have kind of spelled it out for you. So when you've cut out all your pieces, they should look a little bit like this. Now we're going to begin with the front, uh, front bodice section. So we've got two fronts because our fabrics will be cut right sides together, so we'll end up with two of them. And then we've got this kind of placket, long strip, that will form the placket collar at the front. So what happens is, oh, very important, yes. <laughs> I'd like you to put interfacing, unless your fabric is sort of got a bit of body to it, I'd like you to put interfacing, iron-on interfacing, onto both of those. So what's going to happen is, you're going to press them in half, you're going to match up the notches, put it right sides together with your fabric of your front bodice and stitch the seam allowance away from the edge. Now for everything on this pattern it says 1.5 centimetre seam allowance for everything unless specified and in this situation where we're attaching it, I've put one centimetre seam allowance. So you're going to put it on there, you're going to match up the notches, stitch one centimetre seam allowance on both sides of that front bodice. Okay, you can ignore this if you want, but I can't resist <laughs> trapping a little bit of something in that seam. So because I want to trap a little bit of silver um, fabric in there so it just peeps out, I'm going to stitch it first of all to the bodice front before I attach the, the collar part. But I just wanted to say this, if you've got slippery fabric and you're worried about stretching it out of shape, particularly along that diagonal line, when you're attaching that piece, Lay it on top of the pattern so that you know you haven't stretched it out of shape. So I'm going to stitch that on with a one centimetre seam allowance first. So when you've done that, it ends up looking like this. Now you don't have to do that process and you can put anything in there. Sometimes we fray a bit of fabric and put that in there. So I'm going to do it to the other side now. So the first thing you need to do is you need to get 
whatever you're going to be trapping in between that collar bit and the um, top bodice, you need to get it stitch, stitched on first. So I'm, ooh, I'm stitching it on with a one centimeter seam allowance because the collar is one of the places where we're doing a one centimeter seam allowance. leave the long bits at each end because we don't know what angle to cut them at yet so when you've done that put your top bodice the right way up so you've got your shoulder there armhole there and then that's the bottom of your um, your bodice the front bodice make sure you've got the interfacing if you need it ironed on in advance to that collar bit and the way round, you've got to press it in half like that. And this part is the bottom. And then that's the top there. Let's have a look on here. Look, so where it goes in a sharp V down, that's the bottom and that's the top. So then you're going to put it right sides together, making sure you've got it right way round. Right sides together, you're going to line up your notches line up the notches that are on the bodice pin or clip it into place because I was working to such a small amount of fabric um, I'm gonna have a little bit of the selvage on on the wrong side I'm saying on the back side the wrong side the back side of the collar one centimeter seam allowance And then when you turn it the right way round, it's like that. So I say give that a good press and press it so the seam allowance goes away. But before you do that, overlock all of this edge, okay? Overlock all that edge along there. That's what we end up with, with overlocked back there. But if you haven't got an overlocker, don't worry. You can just do a zigzag or finish it with bias binding or just not finish it at all. So some fabrics like African print fabrics, you know, I think you can do pinking shears and it still looks okay. So did you see how I trimmed off that little bit of excess there? And then for down here, I'm just going to straighten that off. Now what's going to happen is these are going to overlap and you can decide which way you want them to overlap. Now the amount that they overlap is sort of determined by the back so I just want you to say something so my pattern shows the grain as going up and down like that and that is really the correct way because the front kind of comes up at an angle but when you have a fabric that has some sort of stripe in it I don't know I feel like it's much better to ignore the grain line and just put this flat bit so it goes in line with your stripes or your pattern if it kind of goes in lines. Does that make sense? So we're now going to deal with the back. So this is the top back, the bodice back. So what we do is, so the back was cut to a fold. And we're going to lay our fronts on to the back piece. But it's really important that you leave a little centimetre seam allowance there on the, the back neck. So that you can then easily add a facing afterwards. So you attach at the shoulders your front pieces onto your back using a 1.5 seam allowance you're going to come down the shoulder 
Now, if you're just going to hem your sleeve and not add a piece on, like we, you know how we did the collar, if, you, if you're not going to add a piece on, then come down and then just go up so you can easily fold back a hem. But we are going to be adding an extra piece on to the armhole, a bit like this. So what I'm going to do is, using a 1.5 seam allowance, I'm coming down the shoulder and I'm just going to keep going. And then back with some forwards at the end. So you need to do that on both sides. So the key important bit here is to leave a little bit of a centimetre of a seam allowance right there. So when you've attached it on both shoulders, I'd like you to overlock that or zigzag it, or cut it with pink inches, or leave it. Now when you cut out your facing, you are actually supposed to cut it to a fold. Now this is like a little bit of a mistake on my part, only a tiny bit, it's only the facing. Um, I think I've cut it with a centimetre seam allowance. So will you just fold back a centimetre when you put, cut that to the fold? So then you get your back facing. Now you can do it so it comes down long or short. I've done it a bit shorter because I didn't have very much material. And then you put it right sides together with your back neck like that. Now I always put a notch where the centre back is, centre back on my facing, I always do that. So when you're happy with it being in place, start pinning or clipping. So I'm going to put a clip for the, the middle part there. Right, now what I want you to do is, I want you to sew, do you remember where we stopped? So can you see that, where we stopped there, like a centimetre from the edge? I want you to first of all sew with that exact same seam allowance coming around the neckline and then if you've definitely sewn it the right amount away from the edge you should be able to still be able to release that okay so when you've done that then stitch it down the facing the shoulder seam allowance coming along there just follow your stitch line there and there and then you'll see a little bit of magic when you turn it the right way around I'm going to make my way around the neck and I'm going to be really careful not to stretch it as I go around and it's, ooh, it's about a centimeter away from the edge following around the neck Now I am fairly sure that I've cleared the, um, the front collar, so I'm going to just start coming along here now to hold down the facing. So it's this bit here, I need to make sure that I haven't caught it, so when I fold it over it's nice and smooth. So when you've stitched it across there, gone around there, stitched it down there, just mitre both corners and then you need to snip into your curve. We can trim it back or snip in. I'm just going to snip in. Now after you've snipped into your curve and you've pressed it, if you feel like you need to understitch it so the facing doesn't keep coming forward, then you do understitching. So that's what it looks like on the wrong side, and then on the right side, it looks nice and neat like that.
This is how we deal with the armholes if we're not simply going to be hemming it back. Okay. Now I'm going to trap the silver in again. So you do that in exactly the same way as we did for the collar. But then we're going to put this, this piece on. Now I think for the tutorial today, I'm just going to show you the really easy way, which is basically to stitch it on, overlock it, press it back, and then just stitch it all the way around in the armpit going down just as if there wasn't an extra thing there. Now if you want to do it a neater way I'm going to do another tutorial on that but I'll just briefly tell you a little bit now. Now if you wanted to do it a neater way you would just attach the single piece on okay so you'd open it up this is the sleeve yeah you'd stitch that on and then when you stitch up your side seams You'd, you'd put both together like this. You go in, out, in, out, and then continue down the side seams. And then afterwards, you would fold everything in. But <laughs> that's going to be another tutorial. So if you are trapping something in the armhole, stitch it on now. So when you've stitched whatever it is that you're trapping in there, make sure you trim it off to the same shape of the the actual pattern kind of thing um, but if you're not trapping anything then just don't worry about it just do this bit so then just this is the easy way all right so this is the arm bit let's get that we call it the sleeve cuff even though it falls like way up your arm so it's that bit so that's got interfacing on it, I've pressed it in half and I'm going to line it up with the bottom, oh, in fact I'm lining it up with the armpit and then I'm just going to stitch it on. Now I really recommend, I mean first of all holding it with some clips, sort of hold it in the, the middle and at the edges. So this is a centimetre seam allowance, but I really recommend you sewing it from that side because then you can see your stitch line of where you um, stitched on the, the shiny stuff or whatever it is that you're trapping. So I'm stitching the sleeve cuff onto the bodice. And I'm going to just follow that centimetre seam allowance line. When you have stitched it on, okay, overlock that edge and press it going away. So it will then look like that. And then if I fold it back so you can see, so that then forms a sort of dropped sleeve cuff effect because what will happen is when we sew up the side seams what happens is the fabric goes right sides together and then we sew using the seam allowance coming around and going backwards and forwards there or starting from there and then overlocking it and we leave a long thread on the overlocker so we can take it back in and thread it back in so it does actually look okay. So if you want a neater finish on that armhole, open up that sleeve cuff. So don't put it on like that, put it on open. And then stitch it on, overlock it where it's stitched on, and then overlock the free side as well. And then what will happen is, when you sew up the side seams, when you put the side seams together of the front and the back, what you're going to do is just line it all up. Now you do need to have this going this way because if you've got something trapped in there it will be too bulky. What you do then is you just follow all this zigzag shape 
and then come down here and then when you turn it the right way round then that way you will get the the neatness in the armpit but I'm not really doing it like that today so we have not stitched up any side seams yet okay that's very important we're going to do that kind of right at the end so so don't be tempted to do that so what we're going to do now is we're going to decide how much overlap how much of an overlap we're going to do on this now I already know when the point of my collar meets the the join of the other side so I basically want to stay stitch that in place so I'm going to do like a stitch line there to sort of permanently keep it in place now no matter how much fiddling I do I still feel that I do need to um, sort of blind stitch that down because I do feel like it wants to move but I don't know maybe it'll be okay on this we'll see but for the moment you've just got to stitch that just to keep it in place yeah stitch across there making sure that everything is touching at the bottom Okay, I thought maybe you want a bit of a, a break from my table and um, we could have a little chat for a while and I'll talk you through what we've just done. So we've basically done this bit here. So we've stay stitched where they cross over and it is actually quite important that you don't let one ride up because, you know, they are, they are positioned to be flat, but you may need to adjust it for you, I don't know. So, this is that side where we just simply, really easily finished it off. And what happens is, I'm going to show you my armpit now. Um, what happens is, it just gets stitched in and then overlocked. And, you know, for me that was fine. That's fine. If I was doing it in a really, really delicate fabric that required a good finish, then I might use the other method. So look. So there it is. Those two will come together, right sides together, and then they'll get stitched into that seam there, right? And, and I really do feel like if it was manufacturing, they'd probably do it like that. I know that a lot of people that are experienced sewers using this pattern are thinking, why is it that I haven't done all these tiers as one great big continuous piece. Now there are lots of reasons for it. One, because I know that, that people that haven't done it before will find it quite daunting to have all that volume to sew. But also, this is the natural way that I would do it. So I've got a seam that runs all the way down, partly also so that we could have uh, an inseam pocket there. I don't know how high up we are. So we can have inseam pockets there. Inseam pockets here as well. Um, so we needed seams for that. But I don't know, I just find it a lot easier to process if we do all the tiers for the front first, all the tiers for the back, attach the pockets where the notches say that they have to be attached. And then how lovely, we just come in we close everything up, sew around the pocket, go down, turn it the right way round and then it's finished. And I like that. And I do like to work in 2D for as long as possible before making it three dimensional. Right, lecture over. We're now going to start attaching the tiers onto the front and the back of the dress. So this is the first tier and you need to cut two but you cut them to a fold. Now you must not forget those notches on the sides because that's where you match up the pockets. So when you cut them to a fold, obviously you open them out and they're bigger. Now I want you to put a centre notch at the top and at the bottom of your tear. And then what happens is 
along this edge 1.5 centimeters away you're going to do a large stitch because that's where you're going to gather it right so we've got it on our largest stitch on the sewing machine I've got number five yours might be number four but you must not go backwards and forwards you leave it open at that beginning end and then you just sew now because I lost my audio you can't hear my sewing machine because this is actually a voiceover but you just keep sewing with that seam allowance until you get to the end do not go backwards and forwards because otherwise you won't be able to gather it and leave a long thread now I want you to put a notch in that centre bit there so in the middle there on that upper bodice bit I want a notch there because the notch on the centre of our first tier will be matched up with there in a minute right very important you pull one thread just one thread not both threads because you won't be able to gather it one thread either the top or the bottom it does not matter and gently pull and then as you pull ease the fabric along okay now really you should do two rows of stitching just in case one of the threads break but we've just done one so you then flop it over match up the center notch on the tear with the center notch on your bodice and stick something there like a pin or or a clip and then do the same on the edge so match that up as well and just put a little clip there for now you see all that fullness we've got to get rid of that by gathering gathering up the fabric so you gather it all up until all that fullness has gone away so it fits the space and now you start spreading out those gathers so that they look equally spread and nice and neat so obviously you've got to do that to the other side as well so we did it on the left so you've got to do it on the right and just so you can have a little look of roughly how it will look it will roughly look like that now I want you to sew all along there you've got to make your stitch size smaller though but stitch all along right so go back to your stitch size of 2.8 or or 3 go backwards and forwards now and you've got to stitch in the well of your gathers so exactly on the gather line exactly because we don't want to see that gathered stitch line on on the other side when we turn it over now your job is to flatten all those gathers make sure you stitch in the middle and then when you've done that when it's attached it will look like this which is very nice But now you need to overlock that edge. See that edge? I want you to overlock that edge, zigzag that edge, or if you want, just leave it. Or you could finish it with bias. Now when you overlock it, this is a tip. Have the flat bit underneath, the gathers on the top. And really make sure that it's flat underneath and you haven't caught any fabric because if you do catch fabric that shouldn't be there it's probably going to get chopped off and it'll be a disaster so as I overlock and sew along look how I keep checking underneath so um, I recommend putting a little snip into here and a snip here because what, the way that we press our tears, we want the seam allowance to go up so that they lay nice and flat. And the same here as well. I want that pressed up so that the tears lay flat. But the thing is, if I press this up, I think it's too bulky. 
So by having that little snip there, it means that that part can be pressed down and these can be pressed up. Now, I know you probably think, well, that's just nothing. But the thing is, it isn't nothing. It isn't nothing. It's really important for how the fabric lays because we want it to lay all nice and flat. Right. Oh, it's falling back. Right, so that's what you've done so far, hopefully. Um, but do you see how it kind of looks nice as a top as well? So I want you to do exactly the same thing. I want you to gather the second tier now and attach it to this tier, the first tier, matching up the centre notches, then overlocking it and then pressing it. And then you've got to do exactly the same with the last tier, which is the third one. Now, my third tier was too long, too wide for my fabric. So I had to cut it out and then use a scrap to add on. So it ended up being um, long enough and I had to do that for the front and back. And then I just joined it on and pretended it was fine. Um, so you've got to gather that and attach that to the second one as well. Okay, I'm crouching down because I'm trying to make it that you can see all of it. So when you've done that, you should be at this stage. But then everything that you've just done to the front, can you do it to the back as well? Right, and then when you've done that, so the same as you did to the front, you've got to do to the back with all the tiers, joining them together. Number one tier, number two tier number three tier. Now look, we still haven't joined it, still not joined at the sides, because now we're gonna match up our pockets with the notches in the side seams at the front and at the back, and we're gonna stitch them on a centimeter seam allowance, because we want them to be a bit smaller than the overall seam allowance. I'm still crouching down. Oh, but it is nice, and then we're nearly finished. Right, I had to look and I could see that you didn't see everything. So look, now you can see, can you see everything now? I think you can. So pockets, pockets next. Right, this is in, important, the alignment of your, your pocket. So the flat bit goes against the side seam, okay? You've got a little notch and a little notch and you align it so it's a seam allowance away from the edge there and a seam allowance away from the edge up here and then clip it into place. Do it on both sides. Ignore the fact that mine, <laughs> mine have got shiny insides and have been um, backed with uh, interfacing because I didn't have enough of this fabric. So <laughs> I had to do that. Yours will be in the actual fabric. And then what I want you to do is, I just want you to sew from, do I want you to sew from there? I want you to sew a little bit less than the actual 1.5 seam allowance away from the edge, coming straight up there. Now you're going to do this on the front, si front side seams and on the back. I'm on the back at the moment, but you need to do exactly the same alignment, putting your fabric right sides together, okay? So fabric right sides together. Do that on your front as well. See how the pockets are stitched on? So they're stitched on and they're overlocked just in this little bit, okay, just in this little section here. And the way that you press it is with the seams coming away. Look. So when I press it, I'm pushing everything towards here so the, the side seams are open. And you do that for the front and for the back. And then we have to put it all right sides together now. So I need to pan back for this one. I want you to see this because we really are in clippy heaven. <laughs> Look how many clips we've got. So I've clipped underneath the arm there. I've lined up the notches that go around the sack of the pocket because all of that has to be perfectly lined up. And then I'm coming down all the way to the end of the side seam where it meets the hem but I've run out of clips. 
So you've got to stitch all of that using our seam allowance of 1.5. Although, that's 1.5 centimetres. Although I'm just going to do a centimetre. Okay, so this is the potentially tricky bit. I've actually started at the hem. I always say start at the important bit, which would be under the sleeve. But for some reason I haven't done that. So I'm coming up the side seam and I'm making sure I'm a little bit prouder than um, where we stitched on our pocket sacks. Just a little bit. And I'm going to put the needle in, lift it up, spin it around. Now we have got a whole tutorial on how to do inseam pockets, so you can watch that. And now I'm going to stitch around this pocket sack. Now I have put, I think, three notches on the sewing pattern because it is important that the pocket sack, look there's one, the pocket sack lines up because it is actually almost like your side seam. So look, there are a couple of notches that line up so that's kind of reassuring. So I'm nearly coming back to the side seam now. That was me going around the pocket sack. So I'm nearly coming back to the side seam. And I'm going to stop a little bit past where I stitched those pockets on in the side seam. Right, I'm happy with that. Lift the foot and I'm going to start to go straight up now. So I'm going straight up. I'm making sure the seam allowances on the gathered tiers go in the right direction. I'm just going to try and get in a good position for this because I'm not. We're going to go all the way round the armpit and we're going to finish here on the armhole cuff. So let's try and do that. Make sure your front and backs are lined up. Ooh. Now that is one of those places that you might want to reinforce and actually go in again afterwards. Now make sure your, your, your cuffs are pushing in the right direction, which is towards the dress, and that nothing is bunched up. Come around. Right, it's really nice if these are lined up properly. Just, that is kind of what you see. And then a good backwards and forwards there. Now before I start overlocking these bits, I have to find my scissors, which are over there. You are going to have to mitre that bit back. And I'd say be really careful, but oh, so in order for in order for it to sit properly, you do need to trim it back a little bit, like that. But be sure that it fits you first. Fuck, I'm in a bad position. Yeah. Be sure that it fits you first. You overstitch that, yeah? Stitch it again just to make it strong. And then everything needs to be overlocked all the way down. But leave a long thread here so you can thread it back in so it doesn't hang down. But I have to do my other side. Whew. Okay, we are done. Now don't be put off by the fact that we started in daylight and we finished it in the night time. That's not because it takes that long. That's because I had to go off to the bridge and go and wave at my hubby whilst he rode in the Great River Race. So what do you think? Well, I really like it. And somehow it's feeling a bit Sandra Rhodesy. I don't know why, because the print doesn't look like that. So, so you can hem it however you want. I recommend overlocking and then just a small hem, or you can do like a double hem. Now I've made mine today in a kind of wool crepe fabric, but as you can see from the original pontoon tear dress, you can make it in crinkly silk, or the dress that I had on whilst I was making it, it was in taffeta. So this line here, I think it's quite important that it falls over your nipple head. Because then I think that makes it quite flattering. 
if it comes down from that point. So look, it goes down at an angle there and then across at the back. So you get a bit of a, I don't know if you can see it, you get a bit of a lift in the hem at the front and a drop in the back, which I don't know, I think it looks nice. But if you feel like you want it to go more straight across at the front, whatever you add to the bottom here, remember to add it to the collar. So that is the pontoon tear dress. Oh yeah, those pockets, look, I've got shiny facings in the pockets. Now, the important bit, if you want to buy the pattern, at the moment I've got it as a PDF download. In the description below, I'll tell you where you can get it from. The PDF download, it's just 32 pages. And the way the document's set up, it's so easy to patch it together. But you must print in actual size. Don't do that shrinking fit to page thing. We're going to have lots more videos on ideas of fabrics that you can make it in. See you again very soon. Oh, and if you make any of them, please share it with me on my Facebook page and my Instagram page because we are going to do that competition like we did for the sculptural bucket coat. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you like it. Tell me if you like it or not. See you again very soon. Remember, you can make it shorter, you can make it to the top. Anyway, I'm going now. Bye.